The infrastructure in Gaza has been mostly reduced to rubble. Houses, schools, hospitals, universities, cemeteries, and any and all civilizational structures have been destroyed by the IDF. Nearly 30,000 people have been killed in the last four months, along with 65,000 injured. And roughly half the Palestinian population has been forced into the southernmost patch of land in the Gaza Strip, the city of Rafa. This is the last possible area of refuge for any and all displaced Palestinians, an area that as of yesterday has been targeted with airstrikes that killed over a dozen people. And the Israeli military has stated that their assault on Rafah has just begun. Over a million desperate people living in makeshift shelters are well aware of this. The United States says it won't support Israel's assault on Rafah without a civilian protection plan. 14 civilians were killed yesterday in Rafah, so it doesn't seem like that's going to be a deterrent for the Israeli military whatsoever. Netanyahu is going to attack Rafah. He is. And we're going to let it happen. And by the time enough people care about it, it's definitely going to be too late. I I was, uh, like everyone here, I assume, devastated to see this the other day and not surprised in the least. But it is one of the darkest chapters in American history. I mean, not American world history that, that this is going on. And it reminded me of the past with the global war on terror. Just whenever you bring up the suffering of people who are being displaced, killed their cities raised to the ground universities cemeteries just you know taken off the face of the earth and the response is well do you want the terrorists to win it's the exact same fucking shit we saw 20 years ago and it's i wish i had the words to properly encapsulate the pain that it causes to watch this happen and knowing that we're complicit in this as a nation. The blood, the blood is on our hands. And I'll, I'll go ahead and toss it to you, John. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? You know, I had two main thoughts when reading about this. The first being, when, when this, I, I'm going to say conflict started, and we all know yeah, that that's yeah. not what I mean. But from October seventh, when this really hit mainstream, you know, it really escalated, hit mainstream discourse, I, for for a long time. You know, us on the on the left. Uh, have been carrying the flag of Palestinian, uh, you know, liberation solo. Um, you know, it really has not been a mainstream position that, hey, maybe Israel should back off and, you know, give people equal rights and not kill them. Um, but that started to change. And I'm starting to get to the point where it's getting really frustrating that I'm reading articles from CNN, like, straight see like it's not like a CNN is honestly slightly right wing you know of a media uh outlet and you read it and it's just like any human with a heart who reads this article should all arrive at the same conclusion that this is wrong like it's just wrong the article ends with the uh, an OSHA spokesperson saying Rafa is a pressure cooker of despair and we fear for what comes next. Like that's the kind of quote that you read about in Holocaust uh, classes in school. Like it's, it is a jarring quote. And the whole article is like that. It's not even like the mainstream outlets are being even very biased anymore. Like they're kind of just telling it like it is, at least for, you know, stories like this. And still we have a president and a Congress who is, kind of just spitting in the face of the American people who want to call for a ceasefire and the, the the people of the rest of the world. And it's really getting to the point of just frustration and like, what will it possibly take? And we know the answer is whenever Netanyahu, you know, gets his nut, I guess it's going to be over and Biden's just going to carry his water until then. But it, it really blows my mind how, mainstream political discourse and politicians are so disconnected from what is actually the thoughts and feelings of people who even have a cursory glance at a CNN article. I don't know. Lynn, I know you, 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 you have felt strongly about this when we've talked in the past. Are you feeling the way I'm feeling? Like how, how, how have you, how has your view on all of this changed since the last time we spoke a couple months ago? I think that we're at a point where nobody really wants to be accountable for the actual things that are happening. Um, I think everyone kind of just wants to 
put a guise over it and they continue to regurgitate the same rhetoric all the time that, you know, Israel has a right to defend itself. And, uh, you, you know, that gets really tired and sad at, at some point when you're looking at 30 plus thousand civilians that had absolutely nothing to do with the terror that was imposed upon you. Um, and so the more that I see more and more articles come out and just see how our president is kind of not even responding to it at this point. Um, you know, I, I posted Kamala Harris that sat down with, um, I forgot who she said, I forgot what her name is, but she sat down with the, with the journalist and they were talking about, you know, how they felt, you know, how they, how Biden and their administration felt about Netanyahu just not letting up. And no matter what, you know, you guys say, apparently you, he's going to continue to do what he wants to do. Even yesterday, we saw that, you know, there was a negotiation where Hamas was like, hey, you know, we'll release these hostages. We want a ceasefire. And, and they mm -hmm. thought, they, you know, it's almost like he laughed at it as if as if there are not hostages, you know. And, and so it, it just comes back to the fact that, like, there was a, a true intention when this all started, right? There's always yes. been a true intention behind the systematic oppression of the Palestinian people in that region. And I don't think that we ever, as Americans, ever thought, um, you know, as, as diminishing as their land has become and how we've allowed all of these different things to happen to the Palestinian people. I don't think we ever thought we would be able to see this in real time. And just to touch on what TJ said when he first started, it's like with the war on terror, which I, I really hate that phrase and I hate that terror is a noun. I always argue with my friends about that dramatically. But um, when we talk about that, we it, it wasn't as polarizing. Yes, you it had the same rhetoric, but it was easier for you know these media outlets to frame it a certain way. And it's real hard for them to do that to the educated masses when we can watch this in real time, when we can even speak to people in, in that region in real time. Um, so it's just, it's disheartening. I, I think that it is a stain, um, just like many other stains that America has that they're not going to be able to get rid of. Um, and, and nor do they really want to get rid of it. Um, at the end of the day to, you know, all of these lives were valuable um, and, and none of them should have been lost. You know, you, there, there was definitely collective punishment and for, and for us to get to a point where we even say, hey, yeah, you know, this might be close to uh, a genocide and you definitely need to let us give humanitarian aid and then not call for a ceasefire. It kind of just shows where we are in this and I, I, it's going to happen like you said no one's going to stop it and um unfortunately we're going to be bear witness to you know the genocide of a people um i don't see it stopping and i wonder too i agree with everything all of you have said but i wonder too you know when when you were talking about the the ceasefire and and um the conditions and netanyahu, netanyahu basically saying he is rejecting that and wants absolute victory what the hell does an absolute victory yes. look like right when, when i when i read that phrase i was like what does that mean to him what does that mean when when you're thinking of absolute victory how many more thousands of children need to become legless for you to have your absolute victory how many women and and birthing people need to have uh, cesarean sections with with no anesthesia or um, dying in the streets looking for water or food or their homes falling on their families. I, I read this account of one little girl. She lost 60 family members. 60. That Is that a victory? What I, I feel like they have completely gone off the rails in terms of what they claimed the purpose of this was after October 7th and where we are now. And, and to your point, CJ, earlier, when you, you were talking about, um, I believe it was you that was talking about 9-11. And, and I, I thought about that too. And I'm thinking if we had witnessed that, cause I'm, I'm almost 40 now. So I was in, oh gosh, how old was I? Like 11th grade, 10th grade. If, we at that age had been able to watch, you know, what they did to another innocent population. Would we be here now, right? Because our generation would have grown up knowing that. And it kind of want, makes you wonder, 
now that we are able to bear witness and as a journalist to see how many journalists have been targeted over there and murdered um, and had to flee their own land and can't even report on the ground. I mean, more journalists have been murdered in 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 this excuse me in this situation. You can tell I'm Italian. I'm getting worked up because my hands are going. Um, <laughs> In this situation, than in many other um, horrific episodes prior to this, it just, it kind of makes you wonder, is this sort of the last gasp of this kind of horror? Because we all now can bear witness and will. Um, and I often wonder too, like, not to take us <clears throat> off course, but where AI will play into all of this, because I, I follow Amanda Seals closely and she was, showing concern about someone that she um a journalist over there and she was like i don't even know if this is him mm -hmm. if they're even if he's even alive is this like a fake recording and so now we have all of that to contend with as we're trying to um have an understanding of the level of trauma that these people are dealing with and i think what i find fascinating about all of this is how this could, in some ways, people say this is dividing all of us, but I actually think it's humanizing and bringing a lot of us together that would never have seen this. And maybe that's what it took for people to say, I may not look like that person or live where that person lives, but I am a mother too, or I am a, a best friend too, or I am a son too. And I wonder how that will shape world politics moving forward and if it can be avoided that um people will continue to stand up in and mass and demand change and what that disconnect really looks like from our government i don't think it's so much they're not aware as they're just refusing um to acknowledge it and and i guess we have to question why that is and who is paying for them to refuse to acknowledge it uh nelly i, I agree i think that uh to talk about what you said in reverse order about like when will people start caring about it i'll tell you when they'll start caring after it's too late to do anything about it that's what yeah. if any if history has taught us anything it's taught us that like uh yeah. there are these same voices like the voices that you know we're speaking right now about what's going on in gaza they existed on september 12th and yeah. you know uh during the war on terror they they weren't the ones amplified uh, through mainstream media. But now that that all of that is behind us, we can all, you know, pat ourselves on the back and say, oh, look how much we've grown. Look how much we've learned and uh, talk about, you know, will we be more altruistic if that happened today? And I got to tell you, I don't I don't know. I'm not buying it. I just although a lot more people are because uh, we talked about this on the show several times that the way the public has moved at all, the fact that the public has moved at all in their opinions on what's going on in Israel is a good sign. I mean, if there's any silver lining, it's that at all. Because if you would talk to even me like seven, eight years ago, I probably would be saying the same thing a lot of these, uh, you know, Israeli, uh, the IDF apologists are saying. And um, what you mentioned about, I'm glad, so glad you brought, brought that up with his unconditional surrender line, because I yeah, I was watching some Marvel villain, you know, uh, defending uh, IDF on uh, Piers Morgan. I think Piers Morgan, uh, was, who was a staunch defender of what's going on uh, over there, he said on this show, he's like, listen, it's getting pretty hard to defend what's going on here. Like He says, I believe yeah. Israel has the right to defend itself, but you cannot convince me that killing 20,000 children is defending yourself. There's there's no exactly. universe in which that's a reality. And then uh, the IDF spokesperson said that, well, you know, we won't kill a single another person as long as uh, Hamas hands over the hostages and uh, gives us an unconditional surrender. And I heard that. I was like, and I had the same thought. Well, what the hell does that mean? Like, how would right. you know? that Hamas has surrendered to you. And I'll tell you it's what this reminds world. me of, um, not to bring everything back on me, but when I, I uh, deployed uh, in 2014 and my unit went to Jordan, we were on the Jordanian Syrian border. And at the time, uh, essentially we were sent there to make sure that the Syrian civil war didn't spill over into Jordan, which is our ally. And uh, our missile defense system has two separate areas. It has a, uh, uh, Critical defense, uh, critical asset list and a defense asset list. And so like the critical ones we can't lose and the defended asset list are the ones that we, we you know, protect. Now, outside of that, on the radar, every night, my first week there, I would see the radar of the missile strikes that were happening in Syria. 
And there was a refugee camp in Aleppo. And every fucking night for like two weeks, I saw missile strikes going into Aleppo. Just it was lit up like a Christmas tree every single night. And I knew those just refugees there. Like these weren't, you know, these weren't uh, like military forces. And we were talking about it and they said, yeah, well, we can't really do anything about that because that's not part of our defended asset list. Like we can see it. We could stop it if we wanted, but we, we, we're we not going to. And to an extent, I understand that your defended asset list can't be the entire planet. You know, resources are limited, but it was awful just seeing that and knowing every time that lit up, you know, people died every single time. And that's what I feel like now, except it's on a more amplified state because it's a lot worse than anything happened in Syria. And I, I just don't know how how people are going to look back on i mean i think they'll look back negatively on this and Definitely. it's just depressing i wish i had a better word for it but it's just like it's just it's so uh, which we had to cover this topic first because we could have ended on this but right. it's it's just uh all we can do is talk i mean it's 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 not a lot but it is it is it is what we can do if you want to add more john it, it is the thing go oh, go, go ahead lynn i just wanted to add a little bit into that about you know, just the perspective and that people have of the United States empire that it is and its imperialism throughout the world. Um, not, of course, you can read about imperialism as we all went through school. It, you know, we, of course, learned about these things. But when you're able to see it in real time and able to not only see it, fact check it, look at different references, look at different perspectives, and then develop your own you know, outlook on it. I think that that is, it, it is really sad at this very moment that we are being, ex we're, well, I don't think it's sad that we're being exposed, but I definitely think that the exposure, I, I don't know what the effects of it will be on the United States, because I think that we're a, a country, it's, especially Israel, you know what I mean? I mean, Israel, it, they don't like to admit this out loud, but I mean, Israel can't survive without the United States. Nope. So at the end of the day, <laughs> At the end of the day, the only person globally uh, that, that the world is going to is ultimately going to blame is going to be us. And I think it's just that alone is going to be such a catastrophic blow to the United States and, you know, our relationships with other countries. Yeah, Lynn, I'm glad you went first because that segues exactly into what I was going to say yeah. is that like I'm it's 2024. I'm starting to get as much as I hate defending Joe Biden, like I'm starting to get into the, okay, well, we're comparing him to Trump, but let's look at, you know, let's get ahead of this and start looking at these things. And I'm still going to say we should vote for Biden instead of Trump. But every time I read an article like this, I'm just like, fuck that guy. I can't <laughs> believe I'm getting right. ready to carry water for this fucking monster who is just letting this happen. Like you said, they can't survive without us. Like everyone's like, oh, what else could Biden do? You know, he can't make Netanyahu do a ceasefire. It's like, yes, he can. Yeah, he can. Absolutely it, can. Yes, he mm -hmm. can. He he says if he can just say, uh, if you don't stop, we're not supporting you anymore. And good luck fighting off Iran. And and that that'll be the end of that. You know? Right. And it's just like I it it makes me feel hates it makes me feel anger it makes me feel so many of these negative emotions and i just can't i cannot fathom what's going on in the white house like strategy rooms that are like no this is so important defending israel is so important that not only are we going to sacrifice thirty thousand innocent people plus including thousands and thousands of children but we're also going to make our own like Democrats, like 80 percent of Democrats calling for a ceasefire. We're just going to laugh in their face. And all we're going to say is Israel has the right to defend itself. I just I cannot fathom the thought process. And the, the, the second thing that I wanted to mention, like the thing that I kept thinking about when reading this article is the, the, the one through line besides Israel has a right to defend itself has been, oh, Hamas is using these civilians as human shields. And we've no, covered right. why that's a. <laughs> I, I've I've ad nauseum covered why that's a dumb another I argument. don't know what that means. Yeah, but it it becomes even dumber when you read about how a million people have been funneled into a yeah. and we're they keep calling yeah, Rafa a city. Gaza is a fucking city. Rafa is a neighborhood. Rafa is Queens. You know, like 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 it, it it's not that big of a space. He's I read that it was, uh, it's like a, only like 171,000 people like originally. And now yeah, it's, and now million. with all the refugees, it's over a million. So just putting everything else aside, even if they were getting 
humanitarian aid and all this, that's 10 times what that like that population was not that long ago. So yeah. just dealing with those numbers, the influx, and now let alone not having any aid or not having enough water or food. And I just start to think of the disease that is running rampant through these mm -hmm. spaces, the lack of hygiene support, COVID, like we're, we're right. just, we're not even touching the surface humanitarian wise as to what a catastrophe this is, let alone the, the, the rockets and the bombs nearing them. Like I just, I think about it and I just, like you said, it's hard not to sort of feel this sense of despair around it. And um, I think that's why we, as hard as it is to bear witness, I think sharing their stories and acknowledging their existence and validating this experience is something to say, you know, even though we're not there, like we see you, you know? And, and it's- As small compensation as that may be. And, and we can only hope, like you said, Natalie, that like this has some, we're not saving these people. Like we're sitting here, no. we're talking, we're talking about these people who are suffering and like, we know they're going to die. Like we, we know there's nothing we can do. I mean, there's something that our president can do about it. There's something that our right. country can do about it. But there's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is sit here and talk and hope people listen and hope people learn that next time Hopefully we don't, I mean, we aren't accepting, that's, that's the such the frustrating part. It's the American people aren't accepting this and it doesn't matter because the only option that we have is worse. Um, and it it just sucks, but I, I, I can't help, but you brought up the question earlier. I forget, I think you said it, Natalie, um, uh, that Netanyahu won a complete victory. And it's like, we know what complete victory we is. do we do we know yeah. what we know what that means. means we know what it means yeah and it's absolute very scary victory. absolute, yeah, absolute that's victory. such a that's such right. a there's such a finality like to that it, it means no a more drama gossip. you know yeah. right it's... but absolute victory if you if you know if you say absolute victory that would be when someone surrenders i, I read a report and they were talking about how a third of hamas has been eliminated well, how many total are there? Do you guys have names? Like, I mean, how are you determining and how are you getting this information? Like, how do you know you haven't killed more than you think? You know, you're just indiscriminately bombing. Like, you don't really know. You're killing hostages. You're, you're you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no- Their own really, hostages, yeah. Right, yeah, right. You're just, you're just trying to level the, the area. And then it's like, you know, to see articles and, you know, different things coming out of that region where- you know, they're looking at the land, they want to, you know, construct certain things, you got your IDF soldiers, you know, sending out, you know, just nonsense on TikTok and everything else, like, oh my god, just, it just, for me, it, it's, it's a really, it's a disgusting stain, it really is, like, to it, see it, it in real time, like you said, you can't be human and watch this occur and, and be real with yourself. You, you can't, like, you'll, you see, <laughs> They said the cartoonish evil <clears throat> that is broadcast like unprovoked by the IDF is what's really wild, where you will see them, you know, placing mines in like schools and uh, apartment complexes and just laughing their asses off while they but while it's uh, you know destroyed and burned to the ground. You see them posting like thirst traps and stuff. And it's like, what the heck? And you know what? The propaganda that really gets me in this bothers me so much because it's not presented as propaganda that if you don't actually think about it or look into the numbers that like a regular person or even a person who's sympathetic uh, to Gaza wouldn't catch it is whenever they say that they have two stats they put out like the actual death stats, which is I think 27,000, just short of 30,000 people died. And they also say that, well, uh, we kill two civilians to every militant, which is a weird number to be proud of. But then when you think about it, it's 30,000 people are dead. And two thirds of them are going to be either women or children. One third is going to be men. So they're saying that every man they kill is a, is a, is a militant. Like that's how the math works. It doesn't come out any other way. And it's just like, and the news doesn't say this. You have to actually look into the numbers itself. And so I just, I don't know. It's it, like you said, it is devastating to watch. And it's just, it's so, you know, transparently inauthentic with how they're presenting this, that it just, it's its hard to sleep thinking about the shit. I just think they thought it was going to work like it's always worked. You know, I mean, propaganda, people don't understand their, they don't understand that propaganda is not necessarily a lie. It's a lens. I, mm -hmm. I always say that, you know, um, it's a certain lens they want you to look through to interpret the information that they're giving. 
And so I think that propaganda has been something that was very useful um, for a very long time, but now we have the World Wide Web and, and not only the World Wide Web, we have the ability to communicate with people that, you know, in real time that are on the other side of the globe. And, and at this time, those types of things don't really work as much. If you just put a little bit of thought into it, a little bit of research, you know, try to confirm small things that they do, you'll just realize like, oh, okay, you just thought this would work. And it's frustrating, especially for the elders in our government, that it's not working. <laughs> they 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 want to ban TikTok because <laughs> because <laughs> because that'll do it. Truth. That'll do it for <laughs> <So. laughs> you know. It's just like that. That's not that's not it. You know. So I just thought they thought they'd get away with it. Well, I think it also it's making everyone very uncomfortable in positions of power because um, legacy media has really shown its hand. Right? You have what fifteen billionaires that own almost all the media now in the United States. And this kind of action um, and the way the lens, the, which I love that, the propaganda lens, um, in, in how they're presenting information, there's such cynicism already with how we're looking at our media institutions. And now this has only amplified that and made so many people go, oh, that's why I, I'm no longer watching X, Y, and Z, and I'm only watching YouTube, and I'm only watching TikTok, and this and that, and then to me, it's like there, there's no, this is not a coincidence that as uh, legacy media's the mistrust builds there, that you are seeing the rise of alternative media sources and now then the subsequent clampdown on that. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like some of my stuff lately, I feel like I'm being shadow banned. Like just certain things are not getting traction like they would have even six months ago, six weeks ago, whatever. And I'm I'm a small player in this, but I I know some of my friends that have much larger platforms, and they're like, oh yeah, it's they're not nothing's getting through to people. So then it just kind of makes you wonder, you know, where where this is all headed if we're trying to suppress information online, so this oligarchy, this facade can continue. Where will this all lead us? And that's what concerns me. Fascism. Oh yeah. Oh, we're there. <laughs> Yeah. 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 At the end of the day. Yep. All right, guys, if you made it to this point in the video and you are a regular viewer of the left wing, you know what I'm going to say right now. Thank you very much. It helps us so much in the algorithm. And if you want to help us even more, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and definitely check out our amazing guests we had on this week. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves and tell you where to find them. Uh, Lynn, you go first. Uh, yeah, I'm Politic and Lynn. You can find me on Instagram at Politic and Lynn, or you can find me on my new TikTok page at Politic and Lynn News. Hey, everybody. I'm Natalie Bensavanga, and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of the places at Natalie Bensavanga, and you can check out my website, NatalieBensavanga.com. Thank you, guys. Folks, we appreciate you coming in and uh, taking a break from, you know, the man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. You meet your everyday life and, you know, just chilling out and getting some news from us. But uh, be sure to check out our guests and follow us. Uh, like, share and subscribe. We appreciate all their help.